What's up friends, Millie Pietro here in the Food 52 Kitchen. We're gonna go on another journey behind the recipe and I'm gonna show you the history of fried oysters. Oysters may be intimidating, but the beautiful thing about oysters are they come freshly shucked in containers. You can go to your local fish market, so don't have to worry about shucking towels, special equipment. You can buy them already shucked. So here I have some shucked oysters. I have some buttermilk here. I'm gonna add some hot sauce, totally optional, but you guys know I love some hot sauce. An egg, just get it all in a measuring cup, why not? And we're gonna whisk. The first time I had fried oysters was in New Orleans with my mom many years ago. I had it in po' boy form. I liked it and it's on my list of things to eat when I travel. So here we have our oysters. We actually drain them. We drain them twice, but of course they're a liquidy little sucker. So you're gonna see some more liquid, but it's briny, it's absolutely delicious and it's gonna add more flavor. So unfortunately you can't keep draining, draining, draining. Drain it once, it's fine. And then we're gonna add our wet mixture to this. Get a little marinade going on. Mix, 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 mix. Like anything you fry, we're gonna start a little dredging station. I have my oysters marinating in some buttermilk, egg, and hot sauce. And in this bowl, I'm gonna add some all-purpose flour, cornmeal, some seafood seasoning, cracked black pepper, some paprika, sweet or smoked, a little bit of sugar. I'm gonna give this a little mix. So you may ask, out of all the proteins, why am I frying oysters? I think you should ask my cousin Scott. He's an amazing food historian, and I think Scott is the perfect person to give you a little bit more insight on the delicacy of oysters. Okay, Scott, so today we are gonna make fried oysters, and I want you to tell me everything you know about the history of oysters. Oysters are older than we are. Um, oysters through fossilized remains go back to the Cambrian era, or about 250 million years ago. And we're here at about 60 million years ago. So you see how old oysters are. We see that in the Roman ruins, there's oysters. And like I said, around 60 million years ago, they start to uh, um, evolve to a, a larger cup size, deeper cup, so that there would be more interesting for us to eat. We know that through historical research, at the Lenni Lenape in uh, First Nations tribes that are in the broadly tri-state area going all the way to Maryland, some parts of their tribal nation, were oyster fishing and teaching the European settler colonials how to eat oysters and harvest them. We also know that Napoleon used oysters as a, a meal to have before battle to bring up the fortitude and courage of his soldiers. And so there's presence in Europe and the United States uh, in the 17th and 18th century, but they become really popular, I would say in the late 18th century forward to the present. So do you know what the funny thing about oysters are? They are one of the oldest species that we eat. Interesting fun fact, huh? It's okay to get a little bit of the liquid in this dry mixture because it'll give you like that shaggy effect. As the liquid sticks to the dry mixture, it'll stick to the oysters and you get like those little crispy edges on the side of them, kind of like pie crust. The type of oysters I have, they're about a medium size. But when you go to the fish market, you can actually talk to your fishmonger about the oysters in particular. But actually, Scott and I had a really good conversation about the size of oysters. I think that we should throw to him and he could talk you through a little bit more about the reason why we use oysters for different things. As somebody who studies food and food history and culture and rituals around food, Sometimes or often it's hard to get an origin story for certain things. I will say that in New York City, that was a huge market for oystering and the American uh, genus of oysters grow faster than in the European. So it allowed us to have a really strong oyster culture. In the 18th and 19th century, we start to see not just oyster men with street carts offering shucked or raw oysters, but oysters on menus and oyster houses, the most famous being Thomas Downing's house, who was a child of free slaves who came from the Chesapeake and made and literally had probably the most famous oysters in New York. Mm -hmm. When we started making them both fried or raw, Chesapeake's were what we were known for and later Blue Points, and to the degree that sometimes they mislabeled them to make more money, particularly for export. And if you look at 19th century recipes for fried oysters, you wouldn't like it now and because they would poach them and then 
uh, save the liquor maybe for stew or something later, then cook them kind of at a simmer. So they're really, what I would say, leathery, and then bread them. So you might have, if you were small oysters, you might have three or four oysters if they're very small, rolled into a ball as though it was one. But they're very, very cooked. Um, and so it's very different than what most times when I've had fried oysters, it's a much simpler breading. So you keep a little bit of that cleanness as though it, you know, it's not the same as raw, but there's something closer to like a country cousin. So now I'm gonna just take a couple of our oysters, gonna get them on our spider and I'm gonna lower them into the oil. You can totally do this by hand, but I wanna prevent splatter. And I'm using a big pot so I can get quite a few in here. And we don't wanna overcook them. We just want them until they're nice and brown. If you're nervous about frying at home, I would say get yourself a thermometer. And what we do is hit them with a little salt. There we go. Alrighty, crispy fried oysters. Gonna go a little hot sauce, little homemade tartar sauce. Mmm. Texture on a plate. I would honestly say if you are a little bit apprehensive about trying oysters, this would be a great start to that. It's kind of familiar when it comes to like, you know, popcorn chicken bites or shrimp bites, but it's very delicate in flavor, similar to scallops. So if you are a seafood lover and you're a little bit scared with trying oysters in the raw form, fried oysters are where it is. Thank you friends for going on this journey with me on Behind the Recipe as we dug deep into the history of fried oysters. And don't forget to follow us on our next excursion where we go behind the recipe of bully beef. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.